Welcome back YouTube to this series on UEFI EDK development. Today we're going to be setting up our development environment underneath OSX. So to begin we're going to navigate to tianocore.org, click on EDK2, getting started for developers, and then Xcode. So the first thing we're going to need to do is compile MTOC for our computer. And uh, we'll go ahead and follow this here by downloading the CC tools from Apple's open source project and we also need to download the source code to LLVM so select the version of Xcode you're using and click the little download to download CC tools source and then for LLVM I actually have downloaded version 3.5 um, and go ahead and download the source code there once you have both of the that source downloaded you're going to copy the LLVM folder into the CC Tools include directory. And then from the LLVM C folder inside of LLVM's source code, you're going to copy all the files except for dissembler.h to LLVM.c inside of your CC tools. It already has a dissembler.h file and you do not want to override that. Once all of this has been copied over, you're going to open up a command prompt and go to the ED, uh, EFI tools directory and run make. And after you run make, you're going to get mtoc.new in here and then uh, you'll be able to copy this MTOC file to your user local bin directory named MTOC and that is the first step that we need to do in order to compile things. So after you've made MTOC um, this is not in the official documentation but I have come to learn that you need to install uh, a different version of NASM. Now I have brew installed and I just install NASM through brew because um, it's quite easy and that's the path that I recommend you take as well um, so we can just type in brew install NASM and we're gonna get a version of NASM that's compatible with what the EDK toolchain is trying to do we're uh, now ready to clone EDK's repository um, and the tutorial has you clone the subversion but uh, I prefer the git version so we're going to go back over to github slash tianocore slash edk2 and copy our URL. So uh, it will take a little bit because it is quite a, a large repo. Once that's done downloading, we can uh, go inside of the edk2 directory and then go into our base tools and we're going to run make to make our tools that we need and then once that's done we can go up a directory and uh, to continue following our tutorial here um, the next thing that we need to do is source our uh, our EDK files and create our environment variables. Now at this point I go back to the EDK2 with native GCC and check out the Ubuntu version and it seems to work just fine. So uh, what we need to do after we run the make-c for base tools is export our tools path. Um, so let's go ahead and export that. And uh, what I actually like to do is make a little file here that I can run because we will need to run this every time we set up the environment. So I created a little file called source me setup so I'm, I'm reminded that I need to actually source this file and not run it directly. Um, so we're going to export EDK tools path our uh, current working directory slash base tools now we also since we're using a different version of NASM we need to export um, our NAS NASM prefix 
Otherwise, it'll try to use the version of NASM provided with Xcode, and uh, we'll have problems, and that will not work. And lastly, we need to do our source edk setup.sh base tools. We're going to chmod that file and uh, source. And now we've got everything uh, copied and set up. And now we need to uh, edit some some files inside of our uh, conf, conf directory. We need to edit our target um, text. I'm going to change our active platform to the MDE module package. We need to t change our target architecture to x64 and our tools, our tool chain, we need to use Xcode 5. Now I've tried a bunch of different of the tool chains and the Xcode 5 is the tool chain that seems to actually work for me. Um, So we also are going to have to change some stuff inside of our tools definition. Uh, but I'm just going to show you what will happen here. Now Now that we've run all that, we can uh, use the build command. It's provided by the EDK toolchain to start building these packages. Um, and we should get one error. All right, now the error that we're getting is actually a warning that's being treated as an error. And, uh, you know, it is sort of frustrating working with uh, EDK source and having it not be able to compile by default. But uh, it's easy to fix this, this error we have here. We'll go ahead and uh, edit our, inside of our comp folder, we have a target, uh, target dot or a uh, a toolchain def.txt and then we'll search for xcode 5 in here and then under here we have all of our xcode flags and we're just going to look for the x64 cc flags I'm just going to add this uh, in the same order that they've added things in here. Uh, and then we'll just add this to no. Change this to no enum conversion. And then we can build that. That should now compile without any errors. Now, I would like to add a word of caution on ignoring warnings. I mean, since we are treating all warnings as errors, you will get this quite a bit as you're developing you might be tempted to just keep adding dash w no warns and uh, we all know that warnings are there for a reason so I just encourage you to do your best to be able to solve those in a way that makes the compiler satisfied now when it comes to compiling EDK source and you get these warnings and it's not building because of a warning I would go ahead and throw the flag in there maybe temporarily get it to compile um, and then remove it once you don't need to compile that package anymore. You should now be able to build UEFI packages on OS X and are ready to start writing some code, which we'll start doing in the next couple of tutorials. Thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it when you comment, rate, and subscribe so I know how I'm doing, know what you guys want to see more of, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.